Hello and all of football fans and welcome to the Dave Damashek football program getting you right in the brain and otherwise for NFL week 12 and as always we're presented by our pals over at Zaxby's home of the famous chicken fingers wings and salads. Look who it is already. You hear their voices before they even arrive on besties. camera. For those of us. That's what we are. We're besties. For those of you watching, uh, you can watch. If you're listening, uh, you should go to YouTube at your earliest convenience. And go now. Look to Don't wait. Don't delay. Right. I would go watch right now. It. Like, if you're listening, just switch that off. Go over to YouTube. Press play. But isn't it interesting to sort of match up? It's like reading a novel and then going to see the, see movie, the movie to see mm. how what how, your imagination painted yeah, versus sure. the reality of it. Yeah, that's one the way of looking at it. The voice matches the face. I think you yeah. listen first all the way through and then build what you think we look, it would like, look like. And, and the whole setting of this. You know, sitting, maybe we're, we're yeah. outside, maybe we're not. Who knows? Exactly. Who, don't, let's not spoil it. Theater right of the now, mind. For those people. Let right. your mind's eye tell you the tale. Then Not the three of us. See how it matches it up with looks. the high-end Hollywood sure. director who has yep. shot the feature. That's basically yeah. Yeah, yeah. what's going on here behind uh, behind the table over here. I would here. say Hank's voice is the only one that matches the face. It's a I little, think. yeah. It's it, well, it's kind of like when you go and see Predator or any other Schwarzenegger movie, and he's in the U.S. military, but he was obviously residing somewhere in Europe until a right. ripe age when he has. They, we, he hasn't uh, broken the accent quite yet. Yeah. Also, I like to watch, sometimes I like to watch movies where you know who the star is, but then you see it dubbed with a different voice. And so uh, Arnold's yeah. voice in Switzerland or whatever, like who did they choose? What do they sound like? That's an interesting. What I accent guess, do they I have? I guess people yeah. have an accent in the U.S. military. I don't know why the robots in Terminator saw fit to give the T-800 an accent. An Austrian hmm. accent. Yeah. yeah. Weird. Weird uh, decision. Little... More, but more specific. real in a way. I suppose, yeah. Like less, right. less easy to to to, that to, to identify. Detail. Oh, that might be a robot. Anyhow, let's say hello to everybody. Because <laughs> you can suspend <laughs> belief in reality about everything else. else but but <laughs> you know what? They had me until that <laughs> damn Austrian that accent. accent. Now I, I'm out. Yeah. I continue to say that the logic laid out in Terminator One and Two is airtight. If you're willing to go and see the movie about time travel you will find that you cannot poke any holes in the logic of if you could travel from whatever year. Is that the right, is that right now, 2019? Is that where they are in Terminator? Uh, that's a good question. 1980. It's, it's, not far, right. yeah, it's, not, it's not far off. Anyhow, let's say hello to uh, two fellas. I said Ola because they both have just returned. Did you say from Ola? Mexico Did you say Ola? City. Did you say Ola? Ola, amigo. Ola. <laughs> Ola. 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 Amigo. Uh, yeah, a little George W. There. <laughs> Ola. Right? Mis amigos. <laughs> South of the border. Um, yeah, back from, uh, from the Chargers. Chiefs game, emblematic of a weird week 11 and a, and a little bit of a trend here lately in pro football. Depressed scoring. Chiefs and Chargers played in that grand total. They went 24 and 17. That became the 13th team the Chargers did to score 17 or fewer points. Un I mean, that feels like, I mean, I, I could look the numbers up, but I'm too lazy to confirm that. That seems awfully low in 21st century pro football, a year mm -hmm. removed from the Chiefs and Chargers game that was played in the Coliseum. It was supposed to be in Mexico City. Everybody declared... The Chiefs-Rams uh, game. Chiefs-Rams game, right. I'm sorry, right. Everybody said, oh, football has changed forever, and ever since then it feels like scoring has... Kind of regressed a little bit. Well, I think just right in step for the Chargers, you know, for defense and and offense. You know, I mean, they have they, they've I think they've kept everybody under 24 except uh, the Texans. So the defense been good. The defense was good in that game. The offense was scoring field goals instead of touchdowns, and they turned the ball over four times. So even though you look at these gaudy yardage numbers for the Chargers' offense, time of possession, first downs, all of that was there. They just turned the ball over and could not score I want to hear about, yeah, I want to talk Chargers. We'll dig in on that hey. a little bit. By the way, that is the voice. Whoops. Whoa! Sorry. And the it's voice of, uh, Careful of your Los there. Angeles Chargers on the radio airwaves, and uh, you watch them on NFL Now here on NFL Network. Uh, one half of Petros and Money Show, available on iHeartRadio. It's Matt Money Smith, mm. and also his companion, his amigo down Compadre, there in Mexico City. We say. Right. Yeah, you went to uh, some, good, some good <laughs> some good restaurants oh, right there. He's ever. everybody, our resident Miami Dolphins fan. It's handsome Hank Hodgson back from uh, from his world travels. So how was it, fellas? 
Well, uh, I will start by giving it a, a big hearty endorsement that yeah. I would recommend making a trip to Mexico City, if, especially if you're in the southwest portion of the United States. I mean, it's a three hour flight. It's, mm. it's, you know, it's, it's like flying to Chicago from here in Los Angeles and you show up in an international city that, uh, that feels like it. it. It's very reminiscent of Europe. It reminds me of, you know, Barcelona, Madrid, Hmm. kind of Florence, Milan. I have like no that kind mental of image of Mexico that's, City. That's the way I would describe it, is it's very European feeling yep. um, compared to American. And um, beautiful park that was able to walk through, museums, the castle, the all these things that they kind of have in this centralized area. We were in this neighborhood called Polanco, which was just glorious. I mean, it re really is like, that's upscale living in Mexico City. Everyone was like, well, did you feel safe? Uh, you couldn't 100%. feel safer. It's, it's <laughs> it completely a beautiful part of town. Um, yeah, it's 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 a fantastic city. You sent me a photograph from uh, from one of your dinners, and I was surprised. I don't know what I again see. We're talking at the top of the show. What people listening might imagine we're looking like. I did not imagine it looked like fine dining. But it I was. guess when, in in the U.S., when you go to a Mexican restaurant, it's sort of cheesily. <laughs> Right. Um, sort yeah, of yeah. like a, a ranchera outfit yeah. playing yeah. the accordion yeah. next to yeah. your table. Yeah. yeah. But they do. Um, it's sizzling Do all the plates. restaurants serve Mexican food though? Uh, no, they're also Italian. In fact, that my favorite in our hotel. There's you know there's a bunch of different restaurants. My son's name, my youngest son's name is Alfred. It turns out in uh, in the hotel we're staying in, Alfredo is the emperor of fettuccine. Yes. <laughs> Which that is that's the name great. of the restaurant? That's the name, Alfredo, emperor of fettuccine. <laughs> So I've started calling him that at home. And we had a tough no grill in ours. So there was a, a Benihana yeah. basically in, but, the, but, in ours. But. but so the place we went to was, I mean, that was as fine dining as anywhere you could go, certainly, or I've been in, in the U.S. I mean, it, it was fantastic. And it was Mexican food, but it was presented in a way that wouldn't necess necessarily be familiar to people who go to Baja Fresh or... Um, no, professional Asia. servers. Um, you know, conversation about what you're interested in, what are your tastes like, this is what I would recommend. Mm. One of the coolest things I like they did. I like that move. I'm vain. I oh, would yeah. love for somebody. Yeah, yeah. I want to tailor the meal for you. Exactly. exactly. Right. Um, my favorite thing, though, is we had a party of six, um, and we ordered a bunch of appetizers, because why not? And they separated the appetizers. So you don't get your dirty mitts all over the plate, uh, right. and i got to deal with your filthy fingernails. Instead, I get my little portion, little portion. of the appetizer, as does everybody else, right in front of them. I'm conflicted about what I think of that move. I've had that, uh, oh, that salad, you want me to, uh, to do two plates of that? Like, yeah, I guess so. But if you just give it as one, I'll probably eat, eat more, more right. than everybody else. I'm yeah. <laughs> That's it. It's a <laughs> yeah. astute You're observation. A Pros and cons. Yes. Pros and cons. But so um, we ate at that level. Yeah. And then the next day, Money and I went and had lunch in a place which I thoroughly recommend as well called El Bajio, which is, I think, a chain, but not a not a like large chain that had tacos that were just we out of this world. We ate far too much. And I, f I had to go to sleep afterwards. <laughs> I just like, we sat there, we watched Red Zone, and then the tacos just kept coming. And then they had this this shrimp taco with cheese and bacon in as well. And it put me to put me to it bed. Was, uh, it was, <laughs> and I do want to point out the one place we did go, that would be considered the hole in the wall taqueria. Oh yeah. Uh, Hank walks me in there. He's like, yes, I've I've heard great things about this place. And so I, I put my order in, and he's like, I'm not hungry. And I'm like, oh, oh my ass, eaten. you're not hungry. You bet you, you're hungry. You're, <laughs> if I'm eating one of these things at the hole in the wall, so are you. Yeah. And they were I'm delicious. not the guinea I'm pig. So, For all I right. know, they're serving guinea pig. Right. I don't, you know, you're going to eat was, something. It definitely wasn't guinea pig. It was, it was delicious. fantastic. High end. <laughs> I mean, not high end. I mean, it's just, it yeah, was a I high guess. end, I mean, low high end. end. Yes. yes. The quality. Yes. Yes. Delicious. Yes. Excellent. Good for you guys. Uh, we wish you could have been there, Dave. Yes. That was the one thing that we felt was missing. Well, the was, dinner club is never sparkling extend... conversation. Well, sure. The the dinner club that we have um, over these many moons here at the NFL has never extended beyond the U.S. borders. For me, at least. I'm glad you guys got right. the for a second time, out there. second year in a row. Yeah, <laughs> got a little London yeah. in last year. Almost like we're leading oh, you right. behind. Right. Exactly. Yes. But we're not. Um, and well, <laughs> I I was supposed to be there a year ago for the Chiefs and Rams game that wound up in the Coliseum. And, of course, that game goes down. And before it was even over, the world over had declared. If you were on social media that yep. night, everybody said, well, I guess this is football now. There's just no place for anybody to defense. Forget Better about defense. Offense. It's just going to be like team that gets the ball last. That's the new way. Right. That's 21st century football. And, of course, in the, I guess, you know, basically 52-ish weeks since then, Everything has regressed as far as that well, goes. That's been blown up. And everybody solves. And my point is this. 
whatever kind of offense, whatever kind of defense is in vogue, and this is, uh, this will go undefeated for the rest of time. As long yeah, as they I mean, play football, there will never be a solve to what we're seeing right now. And of course, that is always, it yeah, is it's always, always it's always been that, that's whatever it is, whoever's the champion, right. we're told, this is it. This is where it's going from now on. Every team's following this. And, and two years later, it couldn't be more difficult. It's all but defense. I, I feel like, though, Lamar Jackson is a special case. He'll never be season. stopped. Is that what you're saying? No, no. I think the opposite. I think everybody is trying to figure out along this, uh, along the way here in 2019. Um, well, eventually, here's what's going to happen. We've spent a fair amount of time talking about that. At what point sure. this season, or will it be in 2020, or will it be in the off season that defensive coordinators around the league figure out this is what we'll do to slow him down? There were signs that the Chargers had figured it out a year ago. They saw him once in December, lost, saw him again in Baltimore in January, and shut it down pretty quickly. Then they really ramped things up with Greg Roman, and now they've completely committed to that. Anyway, there are a couple of ironies to point out. When are you going to stop Lamar Jackson? It's it's a matter of time. It's a ticking it's a ticking time bomb. And by the way, he's he's frail. His he's so willowy. He's eventually going to break. The irony of that is, um, as I monologue here, um, but I'm listening to intently. I just want to see if it's actually irony. That's what I'm listening. Yeah. To. Oh, it's irony. Okay. It's well, irony. I'll be the judge of that. As Everybody, by who? well, you can't run around like that, especially with that kind of ability. He's going to break. He's fine. He hasn't come close. It doesn't appear to me to, you know, even taking a a big shot at any point during 2019, let alone get injured. And in the meantime, they're all the the more immobile QBs, Ben Roethlisberger on down. We've seen any number of QBs. Drew Brees, a a high-profile guy. Those guys have had to sit down. Lamar Jackson is fine. And just as what the Rams were doing in 2018 that was unsolvable was solved even before the season had ended, and that continues into 2019, Point being, in 2020, maybe Lamar Jackson will be solved and he'll have to figure out a different way. But in the meantime, I think the most fascinating thing about where this season could could potentially track is with Colin Kaepernick being the actual trailblazer and Jim Harbaugh and the same guy, Greg Roman, all in San Francisco about six, seven years ago, they were the revolutionaries in pro football. And how are you ever going to stop Colin Kaepernick? And in fact, that was exactly my reaction six, seven years ago to Kaepernick. What, watching him play in candlestick, running away from the Green Bay Packers defense all those many moons ago, I was thinking, well, this is it. The football will never be the same. If this is what a quarterback is capable of, it would be fascinating if you got to a Super Bowl with the Baltimore Ravens playing the San Francisco 49ers, except that you've completely inverted the two teams. Two bits of irony for you, Matt Money Smith. One, Lamar Jackson is fine. He's not getting hurt. It's the immobile QBs who are spending time on the shelf. And the other irony is, of course, that six, seven years removed from Kaepernick and company revolutionizing pro football, allegedly or otherwise, Lamar Jackson and company are doing the same thing. And now the more conventional San Francisco 49ers are, at least at this moment, the number one seed in the NFC. So it would be positively grand if they faced each other once again. What? I mean, it's not irony. That's irony. I don't irony. think that is it's irony. Not, no, it's not irony. It's a coincidence. It's, it's, coinci- yeah, it's, it's coincidental. coincidental. It's not irony. It would be like Greg Roman. I mean, all the things you said are yes. coincidental, yes. not ironic. That's okay. It's, 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 it's fine. It's we could, un- we could an ask any right now plot. can just retype irony but on the screen if you're watching, irony. and we'll just play the it's coincidence. Okay. If it's, the yes. Raven, and then, I disagree. Then everything you said would be right. No. I believe I understand what irony is. If the San Francisco I do too, 49ers, and it's not bad. If the San Francisco 49ers There's were positioned about that. as trailblazers and they then revert to a traditional it's almost thing, and they get bit by right. that snake, that's ironic. No. Yes, no. if they get bitten it's, it's by the snake of It's circumstantial, the fact Greg- that somehow Lamar Jackson wasn't drafted higher and lands with the Ravens, right. and because he's a superb player and has proven himself to be as and such, then they hired the, the Ravens guy just who, happened to be good. Who designed the offense. And they decided so, to hire a guy to say, hey, you know what? You've done that you've before. Done what Why don't we do it again? Here's what irony is. Okay, here we go. Greg Roman. It's being, a black fly in your Chardonnay. Being the, no, it's not. Being the and neither is rain on your wedding day unless you're a weatherman. If Greg Roman <laughs> installed this offense for Colin Kaepernick to right. be to provide a knuckleball for the rest of pro football to react to I think that's just six, wise seven hire. years ago. No, I'm saying six, seven years ago. And then the team that uses that same, that employs those those same um, philosophies 
then takes down those same 49ers, that's getting bitten by your own snake, and that's irony. Yeah. Well, but, but the 49ers aren't doing it anymore. No. I, well, I think that's the point. No, They're not but, doing it anymore. Here's, here's why I, I think, look, I wouldn't be playing semantics with you, except for I think this is, I think you bring up an important point, and that is that great organizations adapt to talent. They recognize talent, and they don't say, like we have in so many years past, well, you know what? Lamar Jackson's going to get hurt if he keeps running around. Lamar Jackson's got to learn how to manage himself in the pocket. No, great organizations do what the Ravens did. They go out and say, hey, let's go get Greg Roman. He did it with Harbaugh and Kaepernick, and let's do that here because it took that team right. all the way to the Super Bowl. I and so I don't think it's – that's why I'm saying it's not irony. It's just it's smart management, and it's what more teams should do when you recognize, hey, we got something special. Lamar Jackson is a weapon that cannot be contained, but why don't we maximize – his ability because we believe he is that special by putting six offensive linemen and three tight ends on the field at the same time and hiring a guy that did it with a quarterback who was by most accounts limited in his abilities as a thrower but they figured out what routes work for him best how to use his legs best and the 49ers carried that all the way to the super bowl what, so what might be ironic is the fact that the 49ers after that super bowl tried to turn colin kaepernick into a proper quarterback and Joe putting Flacco a, became a, a supremely athletic quarterback and they each went back to the Super Bowl to face Ooh, one another that would, that would have with been a ironic. different skill set but the same guy exactly it but it is <laughs> I don't, I don't, first of all I, don't I, know. I, I like the point I like the point you graduated from Pepperdine yeah, with, that a, think with a major in, in uh in surfing or whatever <laughs> I don't even know what you get a degree in you're British, handsome Hank, but oh, that so doesn't that, imbue yeah. you with right. better understanding yeah. of, of terminology. Of I'm the one with the journalism degree. I know what irony is. Well, apparently okay. that apparently Argument the think over. tank in Bloomington is just handing out degrees <laughs> if you pay your tuition. How dare you disparage the school named after WW2 hero Ooh. Ernie Pyle, journalism uh, titan. Now, I will not be hum I will not be shamed because of the name on your school of journalism. I will not. I don't want to. I don't want to belabor it, but I just want to say this. But you do. Greg you Roman, don't want to belabor it, but you Greg do. Greg Roman was brought into San Francisco to shake up pro football. If he then were was to he? vanquish, well, he's the one. I primarily think Greg Roman. I think. I mean, I, not let, brought let's in. Be, he was, he I, think, I think he's just a friend of Harbaugh. I think Greg Roman is a friend of Harbaugh. Right, and I think he was smart enough to work out how best to use Kaepernick. He didn't do it on day one. If you remember, they were playing Troy sure. Smith and, and obviously Alex Smith for a period of time. He didn't work that out on day one. No. They then felt it wasn't like they brought in Greg, Mo Greg Roman because he had that offense. He was brought to Baltimore for that reason. Right. He I wasn't just spoke. Right. Greg Roman is there, homegrown or otherwise, in San Francisco, and he develops this around Colin Kaepernick, and the NFL doesn't know how to respond to it. Greg Roman, now on the other side of Football America, if you wound up with a Super Bowl of the Ravens playing with Greg Roman's uh, scheme, Against those same 49ers. That would be ironic. That's exactly what irony is. <laughs> I was joking. I was joking. I was joking. I don't think it would be. It's still not. It would be a coincidence. It still is ironic, and I don't care what you say. Oh, yeah. And either Explain way. Explain it again, and we'll see if we agree with you this time. How about, Let me repackage this for you now, okay? Yeah. Okay, now it's ironic. Uh, Mr. Play It Safe was afraid to fly. Okay? <laughs> Packed his suitcase. <laughs> kissed his kids goodbye. Right. Waited his whole damn life, okay, I, to I, take that flight. You don't, you, you yeah. don't. And when and the plane crashed down, he oh, thought, yeah. well, isn't, isn't this nice? Isn't that ironic? And then here's the only part of that tale that doesn't fit. I hope it rains on and both And isn't your it ironic? <laughs> yeah. no, it's no, it's not. It's a bad break for that bad luck. Guy. It is not Sorry, ironic. Sorry, Mr. Play it safe. You died. Before, <laughs> I, I hope when you guys are both going into your second marriages. Yes. How it, dare you? I hope it rains on both your marriages. <laughs> that would just that be, would be, that would just be that very would bad luck. That would be very bad luck for us in many ways. Damn Mother Nature. Now, it's time okay. for fresh takes. I feel like we just kind of <laughs> had some fresh takes. We're going to call you Alanis. People for the rest redefining of the show. what words mean here. That's pretty fresh in my book. But fresh uh, takes presented, of course, by the pals over there at Zaxby's, <laughs> the home of the famous uh, chicken fingers, wings, and salads. Salads. <laughs> yeah. Let's I didn't want to do it. I, I didn't want to do it, but I, I did. I know. I I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a terrible think, person. No, no, no. It doesn't make you a terrible person. I suspect, though, 
there's some helpers out there. We'll let us know. I will look forward to some tweets yes. about whether this is or is what not it, ironic. Eddie, could you set up, what is, does, the is there a DDFP what? Twitter Hansen. account? Hansen. Can we have a vote it's on your people's whether language. or not it was like, I know, I, I, but you just dismissed it out of hand. You were like, oh, you're English. You're British, right. How do you know? Why don't you provide? Why don't you be a helper? Why don't you define irony? For I mean, I, 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 I don't want to get into that now. What I know no, is not, not this is This is where Eddie weighs in and goes, you want me to define it? Yeah. This subject sucks. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a football podcast. Let's right, go let's, with some let's football. Let's talk about football tangentially at least. I don't know if you noticed it. It's the All-American Bowl being played up there in Foxborough, Massachusetts on Sunday. It's America's team allegedly playing against the team named for our revolutionary heroes. That sorry. Maybe too soon fine. for handsome. Not it is too, scam, a little too soon. <laughs> too soon. Yeah. Um, um, but either way, yes. The Patriots. Shall I actually tell you something that is ironic, and this genuinely is ironic, is that... Don't you dare... Don't your, your question, who is America's team, the Patriots, despite being yeah. the patriotic this team is ironic. for the, for the US, Indeed, this are, is ironic. have actually become the world's favorite team because of their success over the last decade plus as the NFL has grown in other countries because there's no tie to a specific city or whatever for most people, and because uh, obviously they've been successful and people have seen them win Super Bowls, the Patriots have become the world's team. How's that for irony? I, okay, that that's qualifies. Fun. Thank you very much. There, I just defined irony you for know you, what Dave. I, no, you Not did, a you coincidence. You provided an example, but the... But <laughs> don't, hey, don't. Here's, don't do it. <laughs> don't you know do it. I'm going to go with it's, it's yes. bad marketing. It's not irony. It's just bad marketing. <laughs> no, that's irony. <laughs> it's not. That is irony. The Patriots, named after our revolutionary <laughs> heroes, the greatest players to ever wear the New England uh, Patriots uniform. Yes. What do they get when they go into the Tell ring me. of honor? I don't know. They get a red coat. No. They get a red coat. That's ironic. That, that is way. ironic. That's ironic. That is ironic. Another irony. You're doing well now. You seem to have picked it up. At worst, it's two out of three. <laughs> that, that, you just hit it. Hey. <laughs> That's, just take the W, off. Dave. That's your walk off, all right? You struck I, out twice. <laughs> now, you, now you caught that hanging to, curve. I happen to know. The Bluetooth <laughs> buzzer in your batting glove just went off, and you were able to smash that thing. You know what? <laughs> you know what? Another, uh, another bit of <laughs> What? What did go. I miss? Well, no, I was going to say another bit of irony yes. is when people puff their chests out. Uh, with, with, with condescension. <laughs> this just well, you like don't know insult. what irony is, and then they get the, mean, the meaning of irony wrong themselves is ironic. And that's what we've just you've just heard or watched. <laughs> with who? I don't feel like that's ironic either. Well, we just, just got it right. I just said something <laughs> ironic. Would just paint me out to be right, the here's, ignoramus here's that I am. Here's our fresh take subject for, uh, what is for today. I guess Handsome's kind of I just alluded to what he you. thinks, or at least the globe-wide. Uh, so let's focus in on America then. And, of course, the Cowboys decided round about, I think, 1976 that they would embrace the, the moniker America's team and the roots of it. I guess maybe, I, I think uh, Dan Rooney claims that it was offered to the Steelers and he didn't want it, and the Cowboys embraced it. I think it was an NFL Films kind of creation to, to tag a team that way. Anyhow, it has, uh, it, it, it has stuck for the Dallas Cowboys all these uh, years later. But I, sa I, I say... When all these traditions can get thrown aside in favor of marketing purposes and otherwise, I feel it should be a moving award. Each year we should award a new America's team. So let's dig in on that now. Handsome Hank, at maybe ironically, we'll go to you to start this since you're not well American. Done. Why don't you tell us who is America? Well two, two, well two, well two to three, I'm on a roll, I guess. Man. Okay, you're on a roll ahead. now. Ever since you started talking about irony and, and finally we taught you. <laughs> a roll. I mean, go, come on. Go ahead. Who's America's team uh, right now? Who do you think? Well, I answered the question. Evaluate it however you want. I answered the question for international because I think right, it is the I Patriots. I just said that. I think, the, I think the Cowboys probably do still hold that, you know, when, when, wherever they are in, in the U.S., you can find Cowboys fans. But if you want to throw some other teams in the mix, I would say the Packers have fans across the country. And, um, and you know, that, it's, what that's related to, I think, is more just perhaps a love for – a, at least a city that could be an underdog. Um, I think the Raiders have fans it's seemingly all over the country, and I think the Steelers are, are that team as well. I think one of those three teams. If that's what you mean by America's team in terms of wherever you are in whatever city, you are, you'll probably come across someone wearing 
that jersey, that yeah. cap, that, you know, that, that say that they're that hardcore be, fans of those That wouldn't be a clubs. moving target. Like, you know, I don't think it does change Steelers, Cowboys, year over year. Raiders, Packers. I think the other thing that happens, you see occasionally, I'm trying to think who it might be for this season, but uh, the example that's best for me to draw on is when the Saints finally came out of the doldrums right. and became a good team, I think anyone who's, who, was, who was not supporting or if their team was out of the playoffs. I think there was a lot of momentum, at least in my mind, behind a team like the Saints who hadn't been a great team for a long time and suddenly were good and everyone was like, I'd like to see this team that win. Feels I like think the Bills could be a team like that or at yes. least it seemed like that earlier in this season. There, you know, there are a handful of teams that just haven't been good and when it turns on, the Browns, if it does eventually happen for them, I would certainly say, putting aside my fandom unless they're playing against my team, I'd like to see a team that's been right. perennially, perennially I that's terrible. I like it. that as a measure. It's that's not yes. who... Q not rating, ironic, but if I'm not mistaken, money Q rating is if it, the uh, ha registers among the most people if mentioned. Lowest if common denominator recognize right. a yeah. That's and how so you get I your think Q. by the that most standard, people. I think the, mo the the most recognizable team brand would be Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. So to me, like if you want to have it move every year, right, and, and acknowledge America's team, I think. You have to have, obviously, some working knowledge of football, um, watch games on Sunday, follow the storylines a little bit before you can desert. Because, obviously, whatever team wins the Super Bowl or has the best piece on Super Bowl morning for a personality, you know, sure. personal profile is going to become America's team. But to me, like, I think it's far and away the Ravens this year because you have – a, every, there's nothing stronger than a redemption story, right? And here's a quarterback who was reportedly told by a number of teams to mm. become a wide receiver, who was the last selection on, you know, the first round of the draft, goes fifth out of the five quarterbacks taken in the first round. And all he has done is led a team to one of the best records with the most exciting brand of football, playing the game the way he did at Louisville, showing how dare you say I should be a wide receiver when I can be the most dangerous quarterback. And in the process, has one of the more likable head coaches we've ever had in the league, who was reportedly on the hot seat two years ago. Not only... It, Not two years ago, last, last year. year. 54 has, weeks ago, it was announced November 11th was the date. National stories, you can Google them are saying, yes, they've mutually agreed Harbaugh and the Ravens to part ways to part at the ways. end of this year. And now then they install Lamar Jackson because Flacco's hurt. They leave him in, and the rest is history. The rest is history. So, and I think that's, that, to me, is like an America's team story. Yep. Like, I think there would be more casual fans that, tune, that turn on the Super Bowl if the Ravens are in it that go, that's the team I want to win. Right. That's the team I'm I think for. that's right, and now I can't wait to hear the answer of one, Eddie Spaghetti, along with uh, his mini-me, <laughs> I or just, do you have Eddie I, Angel hair I, here I, today? Yeah, he's here. Oh, there's Eddie Angel hair. Go uh, ahead. The both of you weigh in. There <laughs> I, I literally just whispered to uh, the staff back here that uh, the Ravens were my answer to. It's an easy answer. Um, it's something about well, Social media is so important today, and I feel like the whole NFL media and media in general have to defend Lamar Jackson because of all the bad takes previously about him playing wide receiver, which is totally fair. And uh, I think, especially in the younger generation, they just love the mobile quarterback. My age range love Michael Vick. I think people younger than me now love Lamar Jackson, so easy pick. I want to give you other ones. If the Raiders and Bills make a strong playoff, if the Raiders make the playoffs and the Bills make a strong playoff push, I definitely could see the people's teams, like people rooting for them as like a second team because of the lovable, like Gruden in the, in the black hole, and then you have Bills fans jumping through tables covered in ketchup and mustard. Like those are likable teams. They don't really rub anyone the wrong way. I think that's actually the reason why I have an issue with the Cowboys or Patriots or Steelers because I feel like those teams do rub people the wrong way and they'll never root for them no matter well, what. Well, it's because it's lame to, right. If you're going to choose a new team to sort of embrace, nobody's going to nobody's going to embrace the teams that have already done it. Sure. If, you, if, if the right. trophy case is already full, then then it's lame to jump on board with It that is a little bit, but I, if you're I mean, 18. From an international standpoint, like if you are tied to wherever you live in the world, let's say you, you're tied to a soccer club because of family or because of location, and you know for the most part I can only speak to, or I can best speak, I guess, to, to the Premier League, unless you're one of three or four clubs, you stand you know your best hope is that you might finish fifth or sixth in the premier league let alone anywhere else so if you see a team in the super bowl and they win the super bowl whatever year it is and given that the patriots have won most of the last 15 of them 
you're going to say, well, I'll choose that team. And it's going to be a lot more enjoyable than if you say, I want to choose a team that's never won anything. I'm going to be a Lions fan. Like, what's, where's the joy right. in that? Like, I, I support pain. Bournemouth in the, in the, uh, at soccer, and now suddenly I support the Detroit Lions. That's, uh, you know, switch that off, please. The, uh, I do want to acknowledge, I think it's, a, it's very interesting that Eddie brought up the Raiders. Because I was just going to, that would be maybe my pick of all. Yeah, because before, it, it, is, it was the most polarizing organization. That's there were right. people that hate the and Raiders they have because great of the black deeds, hole. But those of, are way in the right, rear view right. mirror, so you could pick back up and watch this resurgent organization. And they are, right, they have been uh, just a redemption story for everybody, including right. Gruden. Right. Well, and the city of Oakland. You know, I think that's got this bad, that's been dealt this bad hand. Clearly, there's fans in Oakland. I mean, it's Raider Nation. They're all, they're, the games are packed. It's, it's the worst stadium uh, in all of football, and that's why they're moving, because they can't get a new one. In California, it's very hard to get public money, and you have an owner that isn't as liquid as others um, to just build his own. So that's one of the reasons why they have to move, and I think that's kind of, it's, it's endearing, right? It's like, oh, wow, these people in Oakland who love this team so much are still supporting them. I mean, it's still packed. It's still right. sold out. And the team's not going to be there next year. It's leaving this city, yet there's this and success. The, and it's kind of a cool it a little, story to get and behind. It does have, if, let's say the Raiders were to win the Super Bowl this year, it would have sort of a, a Gatsby conclusion to it, right? The, 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 there's no stopping the march right. towards yes. Uh, yes. capitalism it's inevitable. and everything else. And landing in Vegas... But that would be that. That does. I haven't really uh, indulged thinking about that too much. If the Raiders were to win the Super Bowl this year, is that bad for the NFL or is that great for the NFL? I think it's great. I think it's great. If they it's move, because, well, I think it's one it, thing. Like it, when I, the Ravens moved on from Trent Dilfer and replaced him with Elvis Gerbach, that was a bad move. <laughs> this would be an entire franchise. Yeah, we're not even staying in the city where we won the Super Bowl. We're moving to a different state. Yeah, I, I, but the other thing, I think people maybe not the general public, but I think people within football understand that the Raiders are moving because they kind it's, of have to. Like money said, it's not viable. like, it just, it doesn't work there. Whereas, you know, given the example of the Rams, it was clear that something, there was a process that went into trying to get them out of the situ situation they were in. I think everyone is just like, it is what it is with the Raiders. They've got to move because they don't have the stadium and the stadium's not going to suddenly arrive here. I think, now that I'm, I'm trying to just land on some candidates, because, of course, I didn't do any actual homework in advance. You I never like did. To, I like to... That's just, what you're known for. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. My uh, reputation precedes <laughs> me. I did, I did, though, pay attention in seventh grade um, glossary class, and I did learn the meaning of irony. But <laughs> oh, I will say... I will say... By the way, glossary, glossary is a class is not yeah. a thing. I will, it's a thing class. Class. Here's English, what it is. We, just, we, we take one book... And then we go to the class. back to the glossary and <laughs> just, we study just it. Have and a look the next at week we have a different book and Definition we go to its class. glossary. I don't know what they called it. I, 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 vocabulary? Now, see, that's ironic that I don't. I know yeah. vocabulary, but I don't but know, know, know vocabulary. <laughs> vocabulary. Vocabulary. That's I, I, guess, I guess the feel-good stories are the teams that have never done it before or haven't done it in forever. Ergo, a Chiefs v. Browns AFC title game. And on the other side... The, uh, well, a lot of people thought the Browns were America's team. They anointed them that this offseason. I'm not sure exactly why. But, um, but I think they would, if, if it had worked out like people said, I definitely think that if the Browns were in the running, were headed for the playoffs, I think people would support the Browns. I think too many. Too obnoxious, yeah, that's though, a thing. Yeah, too, maybe, too maybe obnoxious, there's too many. Too yeah. cocksure, just too. That's, yeah, you you they need had that done humility. It in a nice way. You need a nice dash yeah. of humility. I think in the there. Chiefs maybe kind of get too it obnoxious? because. obnoxious? Just Baker's abrasive personality, OBJ's Austin, you know, ostentatious personality. Right, okay. I think that's. Look at my shoes, everybody. <clears throat> you know, I think that's. Um, I think that. Fred, Freddie Kitchens. Yeah. Maybe the Chiefs are the right answer. Everybody would like to see Andy Reid get that over would be the cool. hump. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes. I'd agree younger, with that. younger fans skew more towards individual talent rather than team brand. So everybody loves Patrick Mahomes. And the story that has been 50 years, this tent pole franchise that basically. Is, uh, is essential to the AFL's existence and then moves over and plays in the first Super Bowl, then becomes the second AFL team to win, in fact, the last AFL team to win a Super Bowl, 
and then 50 years, no more Super Bowls for them. It'd be yep. a nice thing to see. And they're in the heartland. People seem to like that. Yeah. Barbecue. Yeah, a little, everything little bit else. Of, little yeah. bit of news. And he's got something American. to say. I can how about tell. Jacksonville? Think about Blake Bortles. They got so deep a couple years back. People loved them. Yeah, and how they kind of just like fumbling, yeah. stumbling their way there. And then all of a sudden this year, you know, they sign falls, but he goes, he goes down. Minshew comes alive. And there's and Minshew, Minshew mania. mania. I think they're a team that, like, I could see a diehard Bears fan, diehard Pats fan, diehard 49ers fan. If their team is out, they're like, oh, yeah, I could root for the Jacks. So the Jags haven't yeah, but bothered Minch is anyone. Not, is, you know, if it happens, he's probably not going to be doing it. So sure, that, but uh, but the point the, the yeah. point is though, like they generate this buzz of like it's like a friendly, lovable it's an team. Underdog. It's exactly, an underdog yeah. team that hasn't you haven't seen there for a while. I mean, you know, that's it's more exciting, especially when it gets to an AFC Championship sure. game like the Jags did a couple of years ago, where you're like, okay, would I rather see the Patriots again? Right. Or the Jags. People are gonna right. gonna if you're not a Patriots fan, conclusion, you're gonna lean that way. In conclusion. conclusion is that uh, there seem like there are a number of good candidates for it. I like the Bills quite a bit too. Bills. Now that's ironic. What? No, it's not. <laughs> We're just testing. <laughs> um, now, Matt Money Smith. I don't want to put you on the spot here. But after you're going a to. Woeful yeah. effort. You don't right? want to, but you're going to. <laughs> going to. Well, listen. Which I means want you talk, want to. I right. want to talk about, because Eddie Spaghetti has, uh, has written down as a subject for us, is it the end for the ought four QBs? J.P. Losman met his demise Quick. Long ago. at least a couple years yeah. ago. But since then, Eli has taken to the pine, Roethlisberger down from halftime of week two on, and, uh, and Phil Rivers looking like... It's been a bad season. It really is sad. And, and I think that is ironic, too. <laughs> so sorry, but I really do, because we've talked about it. What if the Chargers, after all these years of, of 17, keeping them relevant, if he then becomes the reason the problem. that they aren't winning the games? Which um, I think and it he did was kind of that feel Chiefs that way game. against the Chiefs. Against the Chiefs and the Raiders. And yeah. the Raiders, Yes, right. the two must-win I mean, games in division, win them both, and you find yourself, to some degree, in control of the division as uh, after the bye week. If they win that game... Get, with Derwin James coming, coming back, back, that is absolutely right. Especially back-to-back -back games when the defense certainly held up their end of the bargain against the Raiders and the, the Chiefs. I mean, remember, the Chiefs had nothing going the entire first half until he threw that interception that was returned to the six, and they scored on the very next play. That's not his fault. That's Pipkins getting beat by Frank Clark. But the other three absolutely were. Yeah, And, we, um, I, and there, was a, there was a fifth interception that was dropped. I mean, that's just a terrible throw. I was standing in the end zone on that last drive as, as Rivers was going down the field, and, well, trying to because early in the drive, it didn't look like they were going to do anything and, and I turned it. to the person who I was standing next to and said this ends with Philip Rivers throwing an interception in the end zone and about because 30 it's happened seconds later that's exactly what yeah. transpired well it is also sad that or I mean coincidentally the, the same, <laughs> come on Dave the throw same, it out there let's see if it's ironic the, let's take the, the day that we have this conversation as we have sort of been talking about for the for the last couple of months here is that it makes sense given contract and, and, you know, where the respective franchises are tracking, that it would maybe make sense for Phil Rivers to move to Nashville, Tennessee for his last year or two um, and play for the Titans. And that's now floated that that's been discussed. But Ryan Tannehill He's is in playing fact too well. playing better. He's playing great. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what's wrong with Rivers. I don't know if his arm is not right. Uh, we all know he's one of the most cerebral, um, diagnose a defense and cut it apart before they even recognize what he's done to them, quarterbacks that we've had in this league. And if his arm's not cooperating, and, but you'll see, like if you go back and watch that game and because we're up, you know, however many feet, 100 feet in the air, looking down at the field, we can see everything that's laid out. I mean, he's trying to force balls into Keenan Allen in the end zone when Mike Williams is wide open in the center of the end zone. He's trying to throw that ball deep to Patton that gets intercepted when Austin Eckler is standing right, who has had a huge game and has, you know, just cut apart the Chiefs defense, standing right in front of him with probably a 25-yard gain on a third and five. Um, and he misses that check down and instead forces it into triple coverage. And that's just been the whole season. It's been a very odd year for Rivers. Um, what so you I, I don't... Watching him up close like that, it feels like he does not trust the offensive line. And so some of those times where yeah. he might go to the second or third read, he just he doesn't even think he's got time to do it. Right. And but the problem is then he's just locked on. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, that, and, and he's that, still that's holding the, the ball. And, and, you know, I, and I think that it's fair, but, you know, I think it's also unfair. The line, while decimated, has played well. You know, I mean, even their third string center, you look at the way they're running the ball, I think part of it's maybe play calling, you yeah. know, and, and, even putting him in position to have those. And obviously you see the way he audibles out of things. And he does a great job. And he audibled into a number of plays in that game, specifically run plays right. that went for big gains. So, I mean, he's still got that. Um, but 
it'll be interesting because it's um, it's not ironic, <laughs> <laughs> but it is interesting that I think a big part of the Chargers' plan was, hey, when we move in 2020, you're going to come see a Hall of Fame quarterback, and we have a team that very well could have been coming off a Super Bowl run or at least an AFC championship run, and you can come see greatness, like a guy that's going to be wearing a gold jacket, play a season, again, perhaps making a run at a Super Bowl with this team of young talent around him, and, uh, you know, come see the old guard, you know, give it one last go, and I don't know if we're going to well, it's I mean, get it. Eli is, is done. I don't think anybody... He's I, not I, going I can't back imagine. to He's Even, not going back to New York, but I I would say each of those guys. Sorry to to no, I, didn't have, I, a lot I think of each of them might finish. have that end of end of career one or two seasons somewhere else, and it may know, be it may be Joe be... Namathy or it may be Peyton Johnny Manning. Johnny Nidesi, or... um, you know, it, it it could be that you put um, that you put Rivers on a on another team, and and we've he... talked about Brady winding up right. with the Chargers in 2020. That's not completely implausible. I wonder, though, if we have um, gotten spoiled by Tom Brady playing as well as he um, has or did. I mean, now the latest questions. I finished officially ever questioning Tom Brady until he retires. You can keep Good predicting idea. that he's finished, and eventually you'll be right. It doesn't make yeah. you a genius, yeah. but he doesn't look great for what it's. But I'm not going down. I mean, down. we've had Brady, Breeze, Brett Favre played very well late in his but years. These Peyton guys, Manning. The, this trio of Eli, Phil Rivers, and Roethlisberger – may be done because I've heard a couple of whispers and the thing that I haven't heard is any official statement since surgery over the last two months now out of the Steelers that, oh yeah, he's fine. It, it, right. It's getting a little weird that there's not a, that there's not any buzz. Roethlisberger's fine. He's going to be 100%. You haven't heard that. And if you ask around, there's, there, there's a lack of answers there. So that's right. interesting as well. Very quickly, because we have much to get to between the Red Challenge flag picks for Week 12 and then also... Uh, we want to continue Spaghetti's uh, fan audition to take. Got to get reps. Yeah, we need reps. He's got to take over. Yeah. Gotta gotta take over. If, if we don't see energy, I think we just cut we maybe this off. just yeah. We just go. So to there's no point. Like, this I is, mean, I think this we, is you know, his like, must win. In a rehearsal, this is his must win but game. very quickly, scale of one to ten, ten being the most severe worst case. How much trouble are the Kansas City Chiefs in? Are they going nowhere? Because that was not. I was like yet another. I there was a flash there of two series where you thought, okay, they're they're back on track, but then you know they're. The Chiefs are just meh to me. I know that they can... I think meh is a good term this year because yeah. last year they were so wow. And this year there's not wow. But I <clears throat> I trust them to be able to... I think, you know, like, you want to start seeing improvement now as we head towards December. But their defense is playing better than it did for most of last season. Uh, and I, you know, it's hard not to say that Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid can figure it out on offense. So I, I, I wouldn't... They, clearly they need to make the playoffs. And that, that's their first I'll task, be surprised if they get to the... I, I said they're certainly not going to the Super Bowl five, six weeks ago. I don't think they're getting to the title game now. The Colts are better than they are. The Colts um, are not better than they are. At their best, the, the, the Colts see, are See, the thing about the are. Chiefs is it's just... It's tough because, you know, as I was getting prepared for this game, I'm watching that Titans game, and, man, that offense... Uh, I was talking to someone from the Chargers, and I said, I, I, I want no part of that. I, when, I'm, when you watch that Titans game, the stuff that they were doing and the throws that Pat Mahomes... Was making, they, they ran a series of screens, I would say probably six or seven different plays that I remember kind of jotting down a, a note on, where they had, he's got three options on three different screen reads. And it's, you know, Damian Williams, it's Tyreek Hill taking a step back to kind of get that quit mm -hmm. smoke. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you just see Travis Kelsey kind of peel this little hook where he comes behind the inside receivers, stacked three on one side. He's the middle guy, and he pops right inside the inside man, and you don't even see it. And all of a sudden, here's this dump off where the Titans had both of these other screens sorted out. And next thing you know, Kelsey's gone for 60 yep. some yards. Andy Reid is so good at drawing up so many of those plays. And then you have that jump pass from Mahomes, which was just stupid. I mean, it's asinine what that, what that pass was um, that went for a touchdown to, to Nicole Hardman against the Titans. So that's why I don't want to dismiss him because you see that on offense and you're like, I don't know how you defend that, no matter how good your defense is. And granted, the Chargers were able to slow it down, and Joey Bosa was destroying Eric Fisher all game long. Chenna Nwosu was when he was over there. Melvin Ingram was. That's a concern. But that's my only fear was saying, oh, yeah, Chiefs aren't getting there. Because I'll see games like the Titans, and I'll be like, I, I, I don't well, know how you just, stop it that. Goes back yeah. to, it goes back to the thing I, I keep saying uh, this season is, it's clear you need to get a buy. I mean, it, it, it really greases the skids for you to make a, a meaningful uh, playoff run. And I just don't say So they 
they're going to probably win the division. But if the Chargers can help the Raiders out, they could conceive. I mean, Chiefs almost were six and five um, because of the Chargers. And then the Raiders definitely wouldn't even have to win an arrowhead and still be able to win the division. But it still is shaping up. If the Raiders take care of business, if they are for real and they can go into the Jets, this will be an interesting test right. for them this weekend. If they can vanquish the Jets who are playing York, halfway decently, if they win that and they can win the games that they're supposed to win, they may end up winning the division. And then if it's three road games for Mahomes, then I just don't give them, but, uh, I, I, I don't give them a chance. But we sat here a couple of weeks ago, I think, and we said, you know, as we were picking um, games, that Mahomes is almost at that Aaron Rodgers level where it's like, I wouldn't want to rule him out. And so, which is why, even if they do have to play three road games in the playoffs, I, I, I just think he could go into any of those games. And for all the reasons Money just said, between him and Andy Reid, it wouldn't, the con, wouldn't blow the my mind. The for me, they, though, is handsome that uh, you'll relate to is mid 80s Dan Marino. Dan right. Marino, like, well, he could beat you. Yeah, he could, but he's not going to be he, three playoff he level teams. But he had terrible teams. defenses around him at all times. That's not the case with the with the I'm not Chiefs a fan right of their now. defense. Yeah, they, not, they don't stop the I'm not, run. I'm not a big fan they, of their I, defense. They're um, a lot better than they were a year if ago. If they when jump they on you and they get up two game. touchdowns, then, uh, right, with Chris Jones and, yeah. and, and, like, see, and I don't Clark think, and everybody, then, then they become a different. But, I mean, just if it's a close game and you can just keep running it at them, there's no evidence that they're going to stop anybody from doing that. No, it. I think of those four interceptions, and it's terrible to say, and it's going to sound like sour grapes maybe. I hope it doesn't, but... I mean, one of them was forced by the Chiefs. The other three yeah, were Philip Rivers three making Phillip terrible bad, throws. Bad reads and and bad throws. you saw what happened in that first half. They just, I mean, yep. the Chargers were slight, you know, were yep. just gashing them for big play after big play and then just mistakes by, by Rivers and, um, and that team yeah. late. Penalties that took them out of, of red zone opportunities into field goals. Um, oh, and a quick, a, a chance for me to revisit the conversation we had after the, the Lions Packers game. Illegal hands to the face again. Just that's one. That's I, it, I really it, like that subtle is, fix. To it me. is the most. Why maddening. is it a first down? Was, was I mean they are they are third and twelve or second and it was first and twenty second and twelve. The fumble by Yel, Yelder that gets returned to the ten by Desmond King, and then they show the replay of illegal hands to the face, and it's Melvin Ingram with his hand on Fisher's shoulder pad that slips, that slips up and up. pops him in the the face yep. mask for one tenth of one second, and that's five yards. And a new set of downs. It's like, all right, fine. You want to call it because the guy's head got cocked back because he jabbed him. It stinks. It's a stupid call. But at the same time, give them their five yards and make it third and seven. A first down. A first for it, down by for the way. that. Like people always say about uh, holding. I guarantee you, you could, if you went back and poured over the tape, there would be plenty of hands to the face that don't get flagged, that just gotcha. get missed. It's, it's, that's maddening. All right, some dandy games to get to for Week 12. Quickly, let's, uh, let's renew or uh, get some more tape here for uh, Eddie Spaghetti and his little Come on, Eddie, there. you can do it. Eddie Angel let's just here, up lots of energy, bit. money. You are the caller, or you're not money. What's your name? Oh, today? am I starting again? Yeah, I thought well, maybe you're the best a second. At it. Oh, come Everybody on. Everybody likes it. Hank has been here for a while. Maybe I he do a, a New York call. Do you got to be a New? <laughs> hey there, Eddie. <laughs> okay, good, good. Okay, here we go. What's, let's uh, get some. Uh, yeah, we have time for one call. Go. What's what? What is Hank's uh, alter ego? I can be uh, Steve from Long Island. Steve from Long Island. <laughs> well, you sound like him. <laughs> All right, and we're back. Uh, 877 337 6666. Got is time for one call. For that is the number of the <laughs> fan. We got time for one call. Uh, we got uh, Steve in the car in Long Island. Steve, what's going on? Hey, Eddie, how you doing, boy? I'm all right, Steve. Get to it. Uh, I was wondering, um, are you uh, excited about what what uh, the Giants could do with a new head coach? Who who do you want? Who's going to be the guy that comes into New York and saves the day? All right, Steve. Great call. Thanks so much. Uh, yeah, you know it was a big game over uh, the weekend. We got Baylor versus Oklahoma, Matt Rule versus Lincoln Riley. Those are the two guys you got to look for. Pat Shermer, he's he's that's it. It's it for him. I don't want to see him anymore. It's a shame what he did to Eli. It's a shame what he did with this offense. You got a lot of great pieces there. You got to get rid of him. You got to clean house. We'll give Gettleman okay. one more draft, see what they could do, get a tackle in there, get someone to protect Daniel Jones' blind side, let Matt Rule come in, install his offense. That's a good team right there. They'll contend for NFC East in 2020. Right. Hey, Eddie, you okay. had your that coffee was... this morning. That was great okay. energy, man. All right. All right, not bad. Now, I would have hung up on him because it was such a terrible call, <laughs> personally. <laughs> what? <laughs> Petros uh, and Money do not indulge a lot of no. callers. Really? Call callers are not good. Not callers they, and definitely not ones no, with vapid questions. No. I you mean, know, I didn't really have which, a question which when is I came direct, into it. But which is the direct opposite? Go Nobody on, place get one more? No, right, let's, let's try it. Let me think. Hold on. Let me just kind of get my mind right. Where am I going with this? All right. I got it. Uh, I'll be, uh, uh, let's go, uh, 
Bob from Queens. Bob from Queens. Actually, no. Bob <laughs> sounded from, very Chicago. Bob, there. Bob from Brooklyn. Bob. Bob. Bob, from Brooklyn. Bob. Bob is one that takes me back to my Chicago. <laughs> I can't stop. My uncle Bob. I just it, it always comes out that way. So yeah, Bob. So Bob I got family up in Lincolnshire. <laughs> <laughs> how about how about uh, yeah, Bob from the Bronx. Bob from the Bronx. Bob from the Bronx. Rogers All right, Mo, my producer said we got time for one more call. We're against the break here. We got Bob from the Bronx. Bob, what's going on? I'll tell you what's going on is the Yankees getting screwed out of a World Series title. That's what's going on, and I'm sick and tired of not enough people in this town being angry like I am, Eddie. Bob, thanks for getting to that. I wanted to get this all day long. Listen, Manfred has to come down hard. He has to show them what happens to teams if you cheat. You got you to gotta put the death penalty on this team, strip their World Series, get rid of A.J. Hinch. Other MLB teams can. Hey, that's what everybody's crap. saying, Eddie. Here's what I want. What Try this one on for size. Let's hear it. I want to get the same team from 2017 back on the field. That's what I want. We replay the games, we throw the commissioner's <laughs> trophy into the trash, and we just redo the 2017 postseason. That's what I want. Make it happen. Bob, I love your uh, enthusiasm and energy and, and, and the thought for that, but that's not going to happen. We'll what do you mean it's not going to happen? There's no way. The MLB <laughs> won't want to do that. They said they'll look into it deep. I do trust them. I do think they will come down hard. They don't want to see, you know, a second scandal like this of this magnitude. It's a shame for the Yankees. It's a shame for the Red Sox. It's a shame for the Dodgers. Look into it. Guess what? Accounts Payable said they were looking into my missing Christmas bonus. And that was from three years ago, <laughs> and I, I still ain't got it. I want to look a ticker tape parade down the alley of champions for the Yanks. They deserve it. Let's throw it one way or the other. Um, all right, that was I good. I thought that was good. That was good. That was good, Eddie. That's it. Thank you. Good energy. Thank you. Thank you. Great callers today. Thank you. Good energy. Way to go. We're, on, we're on the you way. You know what? Why don't you wrap your show and throw to coming up next uh, on the fan uh, red challenge flag. All right. That's all for the spaghetti hour here in WFAN. <laughs> up next, everyone's favorite <laughs> segment, the red challenge flag picks. Dave, take it away. Red, red challenge, challenge flag picks. picks. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. I mentioned it earlier. It's kind of at the start of this decade. Colin Kaepernick in the stick. That's what I think about. And then he returns up to Lambeau the following season, mm -hmm. I think it was. Remember when so Rogers... his home, his home state. Colin Kaepernick's from Wisconsin? Yeah. Yep. He is? Yep. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, either that way, right? he goes up there, yep. and that? it was cold. Remember that game? It was a, it, That's a forgotten drive by Kaepernick when Rodgers gets him down the field and gives them back the lead, the, the Packers. And then Kaepernick just kept – I just remember him continually scrambling out to his left on that game-winning drive for the Niners the mm -hmm. following season after that Super was Bowl. Was it Sheboygan? But, I don't know. I just remember him being from yeah, there. Starting and to come back to me. He's a big Packers Star fan. Yeah, he's adopted. Up, big Packers up. fan. Exactly. That's right. Didn't know that. Yep. Um, all right. Either way, handsome, take it away here. It's the Packers. It's the Niners. Major game for seeding. Both teams I don't, I don't know. do not have a lock on, I, on the division title yet. Both may end up wild cards. Both will wind up in the postseason, but still significant for where they will play and what weekend and so on. Handsome. Choose. I am going to pick the Packers to, to win on the road. Nobody? Spaghetti? I'm going to throw it. All uh, right. There you go. Money explains yourself. I Why am going to throw it. Denied? And yes, uh, born in Milwaukee, but raised in Turlock, California, and wanted to be a 49er, actually. So uh, there we go. I, I remember. But the wait, Dolphins but wait, I thought wait. he would like the Miami Dolphins. Or was that just a Kaepernick Dolphin? lived in Fond du Lac, Lac, Wisconsin. I knew it was a weird name until his family moved to California. At what age? So hit four. <clears throat> Okay. Yeah. So, so, that, so I yeah, I knew there was something right. worth it. Anyway. They're all right. They're um, all right. I, That's ironic. I um, I'm going to assume <laughs> that is. I'm that is actually that ironic. Is ironic that we're all right. Cheers. I'm going to assume that uh, <laughs> that everybody's healthy. I'm going to assume that Kittle's back and uh, he will be mm -hmm. available for this game. So with that context, that's an assumption. Um, I don't like how long Aaron Rodgers has been <clears throat> holding the ball this year. I think it's it's been a detriment to that team, and I think that defensive line of the 49ers is is going to give him fits um i think garoppolo still 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 a little sketchy there yeah congratulations on your 400 yards and your four touchdowns but there are a couple sketchy picks yeah. in there um that that make me a little nervous i just believe in that defense um and i think that's a defense that can that can give the packers fits i it's also uh rudimentary stuff but people now wringing their hands. What's happened to the Niners? They can't run the ball anymore. And well, I don't know if Jimmy G's good enough to win a playoff game. And I, I at least the latter point uh, remains to be seen until he does it. Um, skepticism is fine. Except like you touch on, 
Emmanuel Sanders gets hurt very early on against the Seahawks, and George Kittle doesn't play in that one or in the game against the Cardinals, and the Cardinals are not a punchline team at this point. Um, so you, you've deprived him of his two best targets, and, and like I say, in a rudimentary way, if you can't throw the ball, if, that, if, if the defense isn't scared of you throwing the ball, then it's harder to run the ball. And so I think that the Niners' offense deserves a little bit of a break in the short term. And by the way, George Kittle is one of the rare guys who actually blocks at the right, tight end right. spot, too, and is, and is a plus in that department. Which is why, if he does come back with the injuries he had, I'm not sure that they can count on him to do, the, to, to do that to the same level as he was doing when he was healthy. Yeah, I think he, he might be able to go out there and run some routes, but I don't think he's going to be effective as a blocker with, with the uh, injuries he had. And I know it was... Look, it was a great soundbite, and it was a it was a fun Twitter conversation that, that Rodgers got after his guys for getting all Hollywood and going out in L.A., and that's why they lost. It's not why you lost. It's because Bakhtiari and Balaga could not block right. Melvin Ingram and Joey Bosa, right. and they had no chance against them. And now you tell me you're going to get Nick Bosa and Buckner and Armstead and that crew, and, and after watching what the Chargers defensive line was able to do to Rodgers, that still has that penchant to just look for that kill shot downfield instead of getting rid of the ball I just to me that's don't you think though they, they can take a learning from that defeat against they, the Chargers I, I think they say, can okay, take well, a learning what, from it but I, I don't think they that, can do anything I don't think Bakhtiari it. and Balaga are going to be able to stop that right. defensive line 49ers still have misery awaiting them they have to play the Ravens still <clears throat> I'm off the top of my head now in the Super Bowl the Dave team. maybe oh, that'd yeah. be our still get the Rams <laughs> and the Seahawks <laughs> once more so I think and then week 17 right if given a choice the Niners would take a win up in Seattle versus any other and same goes for the Packers. They have to go to Minnesota in Week 16, and both of those may end up settling the respective divisions. But uh, like I say, a big one for both teams. Speaking of which, the aforementioned All-American Bowl in Foxborough, Matt Money Smith, Oof. the Dallas Cowboys, the New England Patriots. Oof. Both teams doing fine, but both mm. teams yeah. looking mm. very mortal. <laughs> Man. Dude. Oh, God. Patriots. Nobody? Spaghetti? Go ahead. Be brave. Take Zeke Elliott and company. No. No way. <laughs> no. Zeke, I mean, the, their only shot is Dak. And, and, I'm going to throw it. All right. Yeah. All right. I mean, I just, like, why not? I can see that. I, I mean, yeah, look, uh, the, the Cowboys, I'm still waiting for the. I think they can beat anyone on the day. I've been, I've been riding this train since, since before the season started. I picked a team to win the Super Bowl. On the one hand, watching that Eagles-Patriots game on, on Sunday where, where neither team was very impressive and, and the Patriots, especially on offense, didn't look like they could get much going. And then watching the Cowboys, who, who obviously kept it close, but Dak looks fantastic um, and, and they, could, they could put it together. I get that they're playing good defense, which hasn't necessarily been as good as it, ha as it has been or had been earlier in the season. I just feel like the Cowboys could, could go in there and, and beat them by two points in the end. Well, the anomalous and, and I, performance. And I, like how, I by, really love how Dak is playing. Right. When well, New England's down performance was against the one high-end offense that they played. Yeah. And the Eagles, though, boy, I mean, that's a conversation for another time. I guess we're going to be picking the Eagles in a minute. Maybe we'll have it then, but to... Get the ball rolling a little bit, Carson Wentz. Oof. Not, not that good. I just can't envision a Jason Garrett coach team going to New England and winning. I, I, I mean, can't. look, I, 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 that, that's fine. To I'm me, just, it's a, yeah. it's a battle of wits. <laughs> well, he's going to lose that against most people. Even though he's a Harvard, um, and that would be ironic. It's a battle of wits, and, and the man who went to Harvard, Harvard is not the is man who's selecting. You know, I, I, again, that completely anecdotally, I have no evidence to support this, but it seems to me that lately. When a guy goes from one team to another, that there's actually uh, information that he can share with his new team about his old team, and it actually makes an impact. Well, then that makes sense for Michael Bennett against the Patriots, mm. just removed from them. Might have some insight, Maybe. especially. Exactly. Isaiah wins back now, and that should make a big difference for the Patriots, but still. I mean, wait, hold on a second. Isaiah, he, how many games had he played like for the three. Patriots before now? Well, like, I, everyone keeps, I'm a pedigree I get it. But everyone keeps know. talking about, well, how many first-round left tackles work out you know, perfectly? Everyone keeps talking about how this is going to make a huge difference. Let's hold on and, and let him actually play some games in, in our league. Perhaps, but the offense there in New England looks pedestrian, and I'm waiting for the defense to get going in Dallas. I don't get the, why the sum isn't equally right. the part well, that, there, but Michael right. Bennett has played well, and... Um, maybe it'll look a lot like the Eagles game did a week ago. You know, the press scoring yeah. on both sides. I can see that. Yep. 22-20, um, Cowboys. But the, let's not be silly. Thank the you. Patriots are going to win this one. <laughs> Here's a fascinating one. Eddie Spaghetti. I'd like you to pick this one. 
I didn't even hear Eddie. it. Eddie! I don't have time to stop. I'm going to keep going here. Keep it rolling, Dave. It's what several people here said is now the 2019 America's team, the Baltimore Ravens. No, we're not throwing these No flags. one is. You no don't, Dave, you don't need to wave that around. Down. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, let's see here. At the Los Angeles Rams, keeping themselves in the mix with that... Uh, Dramatic you know, setup, notwithstanding, yeah. you're not throwing that. You know, flag. unless unless maybe the Ravens go and enjoy LA's nightlife. Yeah, just ask Aaron Rodgers yeah. about that. Eddie Spaghetti. Jeez. I mean, I've been on the Lamar train the entire year. I'm not going to get off now versus a very discombobulated Rams. Yeah. What are they going to do? They're going to the Ravens are never going to lose another game. What not is that? Not, this one. not against the Rams, they're not. Jer- Jared Goff and the way he's playing ain't going to beat him. I can tell you that. Defense is defense for LA is playing well. Sure is. But. This story is, and the reason that I didn't jump off the Lamar train, but I said I don't know how far they ultimately can take this with the defense playing the way it was. If it, you know, the you hear it ad nauseum on any broadcast about complimentary football, but really, you can't if you cannot rally from two scores down. And I kind of feel like the the Ravens, for whatever songs you want to sing about them, they they probably aren't built that way if the defense is giving yep. up 25, 30 points a game. But what if they're holding so Deshaun Watson to seven? That, yeah, that's not <laughs> happening the de- against the Rams, though. Right. With the defense doing this now, I, now right. I really don't know who's going to beat the Ravens. I, I Not to say they're going to go undefeated through from now through February, but still, I mean, I, I don't know. But who they had an easier time. I mean, against the Texans, they were able to turn the defense loose because they were up by so much. Like, the, the, the hope is, or if you're a Rams fan, the hope is that you can at least stay level with mm. them going into the second half. I just don't see that. I don't happening. see it happening. I mean, I, they struggled with the Bears. Right. You know, I mean, they, they struggled they really to did. score. And look, the Bears defense is good, no question. But you had ever, every opportunity to pull away from that team, and they just could not. And you know that the, the Rams are the Ravens are not going to score 10 points. The Ravens are going to make you beat them with at least 24. And well, I just don't see Jared Goff doing that this season. As Not with can, that offensive line. As you can start to see the finish line now of the regular season, they'll be watching the Rams will be to see what teams like the Pack. Well, the, the Packers, they'll know what goes down there. They're probably not in line to catch the Packers no matter what, but they'll be rooting hard to see the Patriots vanquish the Cowboys and to see the Eagles get knocked down by the Seahawks. Um, Vikings. One of those you got Vikings and Seahawks ahead of them right the, now. The Vikings. The Vikings are the team that I didn't anticipate, but beat, beating Dallas and then rallying like they did last week, it's getting them awfully close to the Vikings are the one, up a, right? a, a wild card. So yeah, the Vikings are the one because they're only a game back of the Vikings. They got four losses. Vikings Packers, have three, right. and the Vikings got a pretty tough schedule. So that's that's the way that maybe the Rams can can get in, but they've they've got to be good win teams. Some, they, st- yeah, they can't just. That's yeah. the thing. They they have to beat good teams. It's and not what the other teams had are doing. to have the one against the Bears. They scratched that one out, and for what it's worth, Todd Gurley at least looked good. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Uh, you know what that was to me? Like that was. See, After the Todd's fumble, still okay. Good. Todd's fine. He's, it's like, yeah, if he was fine, I can tell you what you would have been doing all season long, and that's riding him a lot the ba- more. The bar the seems to be a lot lower for Todd Gurley. Good performances these days. Yeah. Everybody involved with that with that uh, group refuses to acknowledge. Nope, don't know what you yeah. think. Don't know why you think anything's wrong, because uh, he gets about like eight touches a game, and, he, and he's supposed to be the best running back in the him. league. Um, next up, Battle of the Birds. It seems like these two teams have been relevant for the last handful of years, both on the NFC side of things. Handsome Hank. Hey, you pick it, Dave. No, no. Yeah, you pick it. <laughs> Come on, Dave, you do okay, it. Okay, I will. Seahawks, Eagle. Choose. I'm going to take the Philadelphia Eagles to win at home. Ooh, no Jared How- uh, no Jordan Howard, or at least it's tracking that way as of now. Yep, All on three throw the flag, spaghetti, handsome money. Handsome, why don't you explain yourself? Um, I just, I've, I'm in love with the Seahawks. I'm in love with what they're doing. I mean, I'm always in love with what they're doing on offense, and now suddenly their defense seems to have figured it out as well. And the Eagles, as you, I, in fact, I'm, I'm now even more astonished that you've made the pick that you did based on what you just said about the Eagles. I don't understand how you think that Eagles offense is going to be able to score enough points to keep up with that Seahawks offense. Because I refuse to accept what's in front of me when I when I see the pieces that are there. It doesn't make sense to me. But the pieces that, that are there are not better than the pieces that are on the other team that you just picked against. 
Didn't you ju you just made the uh, the old sum of the parts better than the right. whole? I know. I don't understand though why the Eagles' offensive line. It is very strange that within the state of Pennsylvania, that the two uh, offensive lines that I think preseason were embraced as the two best, probably yeah, have both been mediocre to downright liabilities in stretches I, this season. And I don't know why why the Eagles now with Lane Johnson and if he's not available and Jadavian Clowney and um, and Anson and the rest of them getting it going. Um, maybe I should I, um, change it. Maybe I should change it. Yeah, you, you can't should. change it now. It's terrible. I'm not We've going already thrown up five Eagles. Eagles. <clears throat> I just don't see the Eagles are going to be five and six yeah. and on their yes. way out of the yes, playoffs. Yes, the what same as the Rams. Here? Josh Gordon's still playing, by the way, right? He's still in the league? Because that's, that's terrifying for the rest of the league. If he's still on that team when the playoffs roll around and you've got the perfect compliment to him and Tyler Lockett, and on top of that... A six foot four, two hundred and thirty pound guy that's blazing down a sideline and has already figured out how to win 50 50 balls that are thrown up by Russell Wilson and DK Metcalf. Like, that is a terrifying combo. Uh, yes, if definitely Gordon is true. continuing to play. And you saw yep. a couple clutch catches by him against the 49ers and where his impact was already felt. Booger's uh, hyperbole, notwithstanding, what was celebrated the, about Jadavian Clowney. That wasn't hyperbole, oh. in fact. He was, in fact, dominant against the Niners a couple of Monday nights ago. Um, <laughs> I, I think also the the Eagles, obvious. I mean, the Patriots have a knack of making almost everybody they play look terrible. And prior to that game, the Eagles had been hot. Now, Jordan Howard was a big part of that, so I don't know if he's available. Lane Johnson, I don't know what his availability is. But at home, I, I, there's no football to this. It's just I can't see the Eagles, who a lot of people, including me, thought we're, we're, gonna, we're, we're about as flawless they're secondary they again. just they, they, I, I, Carson Wentz by himself though he's going to get a lot of the blame but they don't seem to have settled on a running back they don't they don't seem to have understood like this is a one a, a, a one guy that we can rely on it seems to change series to series and his receivers let him down every single time you know every, one in every two balls is catchable and just dropped like he, I don't, I feel like he's been let down, and then I like you say, the offensive I, I don't line, put it on the offensive that's line a good one. Been, Spaghetti mm -hmm. next week for fresh takes. What position as a whole has been the worst in? Well, in I, pro I'll tell you, this year I, in receivers? one thing. Kicker. No offensive line. I don't understand. Like compared to oh, well, when we bad, were compared to our youth. Like I, I don't know. Maybe I. But like watching football, you never kind of. There weren't teams that just had terrible offensive lines. This year, I would say half the league yeah. is like more. Yeah, probably more than Three half. Quarters. The, there's probably only like six teams that have an offensive line that is actually serviceable. I don't. I mean, I, I think I do know some of the reasons for it, but it just and that never ever seemed to be an issue when when we were younger. That that teams just had terrible. You know, there'd be a, a couple of teams that did, but it just seems like all of them are just. I bad. think, you know what? I think talking about getting spoiled, like we said about Tom Brady, changing our perception of how old a quarterback can be and still be um, halfway decent. I think that Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, and Ben Roethlisberger made us feel like, well, you could have a bad offensive line. That doesn't make a difference. You could still win games because they were winning behind Lyle. Right, but there's only three or four of those quarterbacks ever at any point in the league. There's still, they still used to be enough offensive lines that could keep a – Mediocre quarterback upright for long enough. For you have me to tempted to pass. take the Seahawks, but I you're not allowed to, David. I'm not going to. But I, I, I would say like. just quickly on the offensive line thing. I think it's a couple things. Um, one proliferation of spread offense yep. where the ball's out before they even have to hold the block. Um, yep. Two, what you just alluded to, Dave, with you know what Aaron Rodgers and Ben Roethlisberger and Russell Wilson have been able to. The Cardinals have the worst offensive line personnel group in the league. But look what they're able to do because Kyler Murray is able to extend plays. and move. So I think there is something to that as you have too many of these quarterbacks that come into this league and we're given a play and we're given a hot read in these offenses and, and that's what college has become. So now they are trying to diagnose defenses and get through their progressions and far too many of them take too long take too and long they're to taking it. sacks. Yep. And it maybe isn't on the offensive line. But I do think, you know... It, it is, it's interesting because when we talk to coaches, um, most of them will say, look, you can coach these guys. It's not like guys forgot how to block and play offensive line. That's not the problem. You know, it's, it's, it's a number of things that, you know, like you mentioned, it's not all Carson Wentz's fault. It's not all the individual offensive linemen's fault. There's a lot of things that go into it, and there's a lot of things you can do to mask it. I, by the way, I mean, I, we can do that at a later date, I guess, but I'll just say about pass catchers or – guys who are nominally pass catchers who don't catch passes. They, these guys have, 
These guys have gloves on that are that are they're sticky. Uh, they're, I, they're sticky as all get out. And, they, and I, I, again, for the umpteen time, anecdotally, it feels to me like if you looked it up, this would be the most drop passes by percentage yeah, that, that we've mean, seen right. in a decade. These Going guys back to are the dropping. Eagles and to Carson Wentz, that pass he threw to Nelson Aguilar at the end of that game was a sensational throw. That should have been caught. Get it into to get should've it up caught. and back down into his hand. That should have been caught by a guy who who goes by the position right. name of receiver. Precisely right. Um, all right, let's bring it on home with where week 12 will begin. That is in Houston, Texas. Thursday night football. There's a lot of good Thursday Can night games this season Can I have a, a season, flag, yeah. please? There you go. Thank and you. we will have... Someone mentioned that it's the first time in, and I don't know how many years or days or whatever, that all three primetime games are between teams with winning records. Ooh, You're kidding. Good for us. Yeah. That's a thing this week. Boy, this one is. this one feels really big. Then again, wouldn't be surprised if the Titans rally and end up winning that division the way they've been playing, too. But anyhow, Colts, Texans, Thursday Night Football, Matt Money Smith. I choose. Texans. Bang. I wanted to throw a flag at some point. You did it, Dave. Nothing spaghetti? Holding it. Everybody's taking the Texans. I'm holding it. Holding. That's what it means. When I, th- I, when I don't throw it, I agree with the pick. I understand what you're doing. <laughs> wow, and a little bit of sass out of Spaghetti since he got his own radio show. <laughs> I think the Colts are a better team than the Texans. They are going to pick the Colts to beat the Texans. What part of their team do you think is better, Dave? Let's break this down. I, when Jacoby Brissett is available, believe it or not, and like it's anybody else, I would have been a skeptic of this in August, but... It, and. You know, that's another great story, too. The Wally Pip, and by the way, where did the Patriots dynasty begin when uh, the high-profile Drew Bledsoe, the high-pedigree Drew Bledsoe, got replaced by some rando guy? And that's why the Eagles were so compelling a couple of years ago, too, was when Nick Foles did it. Jacoby Brissett, we're not celebrating what he's doing enough, and maybe it got temporarily paused because he got hurt in Pittsburgh three weeks ago. But when he's in there, this they're built in a 2019 kind of style that should be great that defense very quietly is capable of dominating the offensive line capable and and mostly is dominant and when they get ty hilton back and by the way they haven't had him in three weeks so a little stumble in the six and four you look at a little cross-eyed but you could make a case well not easy not tough to make a case vinatieri makes a kick in heinz field they're seven and three and 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 we're talking about "Ah, very good team maybe they maybe they catch the patriots and get a two seed or maybe they catch the Ravens. i won't be surprised if they win i think they are two evenly matched teams if you're talking about agree if you're talking about underrated players like Brissett, i say marlon mack is that is that as a running back yeah that's without him I wonder who's gonna who's gonna take the place, and if they can just say, okay, well, let's let's stop for a T. Y. Hilton did practice. He went through the walkthrough today. He's officially fifty. It's a huge ad. He does that every week though, and then he doesn't yeah. play. It seems to me though that they take away. I like a guy who can, you know, obviously can extend the plays and everything else. But with Watson, it's either he's kind of in a naked boot kind of a thing, and then he, he either chooses to run or push it twenty yards over the heads of the guys that are trying to make a decision to step up on him or to or to stay where they are. And it seems to me that they should be using Duke Johnson much more than they do. Or Carlos Hyde, but I assume Duke Johnson. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're running the ball choice. effectively. I think, you know what happens with the Texans? Well, what has happened with the Texans today is just that but they But can't got, you screen? I mean, isn't that set up for screens yeah. when you have I mean, a guy who can, move, great. who can move, who can roll a little bit to the right, and then yeah. get, that's kind of what you were talking about right. with the Chiefs a little bit, and they don't take advantage of, no, yeah, of yeah, what I think, that provides. I will say, though, they are... I like the way they run the ball with Carlos Hyde. I like their new additions to the offensive line. Um, Watson is still in the MVP conversation, even after getting demolished by the Ravens. Should they go on to win every one of their games and finish 12-4, and four, I think it'll be brought up um, at how good he's been. I think we just kind of, you know, with the Texans, I think people are probably dismissing them. But you have to remember, this is a Baltimore Ravens team. Yes, they beat them by 31 um, or 37, whatever, 27. I don't know what it was. Anyway, they beat the Patriots by, what, 17? They beat the Seahawks in Seattle by 14. Like, this is a Ravens team yep. that over the last month has wrecked it's weird. really good it's weird teams. So how they're whipping. Yeah. They're, they're a not, they're, it's like Nebraska in the early 80s. They, they're <laughs> playing Kansas and Kansas State and then Iowa State. Just destroying everybody right. by 50, it feels like. It's, uh, so I, I'm, I, I'm with you about yeah. that. I'm not a prisoner of the moment right. just because they... Well, well, I think that kind Ravens. of is what came. Well, clearly the Texans. I was like, no, nah, they just they, they ran they, into the buzzsaw. Into, yeah. You know that that team is a buzzsaw right now, and they they got the same treatment that the Pats and the Seahawks. Got. They kept the float for a little while after J.J. Watt went down, but let let's not forget that 
um, he is their best defensive player, and he's gone for the year. Yeah. So it might not be a, And that secondary is not very good. Right. It, it might not be. It might just be who the Texans are. Yeah. They can't stop anybody, and Deshaun Watson's going to have to shoot it out every week. Um, all right, so that's that. Uh, right, that's good that. stuff. Eddie Spaghetti over there. Continued uh, success with your auditioning for the fan. Do you know the Mike Francesa theme song by heart? The, like, Mike's on, on he's ready, he's to, ready go to go on the fan. fan. Sports radio, Mike's Mike on. Mike's on. Yeah. Right? Mike's yeah. on. It's it's he, like, bon Jovi, like, wrote his theme. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and Google that. Listen to Mike Francesa's opening song. And then let's get one for Eddie. Let's get one There we go. Pass. That's how so we get the a next job. Yeah, let's, exactly. Let's, let's, reverse engineering. All right, we'll do that. And then we'll talk to you after week 12 in front of week 13 to help make sense of all of it in front of Thanksgiving as well. So we have a lot of work to do before uh, before you cut into your turkey. Enjoy week 12, everybody. For Handsome Hank, Matt Money Smith, Eddie Spaghetti, and everybody back there behind the counter. Thanks so much, football fans. It's been a thin slice of heaven. Oh, too late. Uh.